Today, we're talking about fatty liver disease. It's a high value claim because it comes in at 10, 20, 40, 60, and it goes all the way up to 100% as far as the rating is concerned. About 25% of us already have this disease. Another 25% of it have it, and we don't even know it yet. This is a very common disease. It's the liver. This is a disability that is a high value claim, and you might not even know you have it. So get tested for fatty liver disease, and if you have it, file it. What is fatty liver disease? The liver is the largest organ in the body. It aids in digestion, energy storage, and removal of toxins. Fatty liver disease is a condition in which fat builds up in the liver. There's two major types of fatty liver disease. They both are rated under the same diagnostic code, which I'll get to in a minute. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and then alcoholic fatty liver disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a type of fatty liver disease that is not related to heavy alcohol use. If it's non-alcoholic, it doesn't have to do with alcohol. If it has alcoholic, then it does. And just to address that part, a lot of us drink, a lot of us learn how to drink in the military. We got out, we have PTSD, things like that. We didn't know we had PTSD, so we drank our problems away as a coping mechanism. Very common, very common among veterans. You know, if you think about it, um, that's why so many veterans have it. And, you know, on that side, that's why a lot of us have it. We don't even know we have it. So get that test. Simple fatty liver. You have fat in your liver, but little or no inflammation or liver cell damage. This subtype of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease does not usually get severe enough to cause liver damage or complications. The other one here, non-alcoholic statohepatitis. You have inflammation and liver cell damage as well as fat in your liver. Here, inflammation and liver cell damage can cause scarring of the liver. This subtype may lead to cirrhosis of the liver or liver cancer. Now let's talk about alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is due to heavy alcohol use and consumption. Specifically, the body's process of breaking down alcohol can generate harmful substances, which then damage liver cells, promote inflammation, and weaken your body's natural defenses. If alcoholic fatty liver disease progresses, it typically results in alcoholic hepatitis and cirrhosis. Cirrhosis, by the way, is a different diagnostic code and it's different rating. The VA rates fatty liver disease under diagnostic code 7345, and it comes down to the severity of your symptoms. Of course, that's where the rating comes from. The rating always comes from the severity of your symptoms. To establish service connection, you do need to have current symptoms, but you also need a current diagnosis and a current nexus, the medical nexus. And let's talk about that for a second. Obesity is something that we run into. I don't know how much I weighed back in 1991, 160, 170 pounds. I'm 225, been up to 240. So I'm obese. So get your head wrapped around that. You're obese or, you know, there's a scale that they use. So you never want to run from obesity. You want to address obesity. So when your doctor writes the nexus, you want to address the obesity or have him address the obesity as the intermediate step between your current diagnosis of fatty liver disease and whatever you're trying to service connected to on a secondary service connection basis. One good idea is PTSD. It's well documented. You have PTSD, a lot of drinking, didn't get seen for a long time, you know, if your story is anything like mine. And that's a good secondary claim to PTSD. This comes down to strategy. You know, how can you get your fatty liver disease connected to something that's already service connected? Everybody's strategy is a little bit different. If you want to talk strategy, check out my boot camp. Links in the description. You're going to need a nexus as well. And if your doctor won't write you one, that's not an excuse to just file the claim anyway. Get one. If you need a doctor to write you a nexus, here's an email address. Second Strata will help you out. There, there's always issues when you're filing claims and we're talking strategy. With fatty liver disease, 
Some of the things you need to be aware of is GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease, and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. If you have a rating for one of those two, and then you file a claim for fatty liver disease, you're going to run into pyramiding issues. Pyramiding basically means that they're not going to pay different rates for the same symptoms, in a nutshell. So if you have a 30% rating for GERD, you go get a diagnosis for fatty liver disease, and then you you know get a 40% rating, they're going to go with the higher rating. So they're going to take the 40 for fatty liver disease, and then they're going to bind your 30 into the 40. So Pyramiding, I, I usually suggest to stay away from it. So, you know, if you can, if your doctor can pull the symptoms apart, that's great. Commonly, you can't do that. So, if you have GERD and IBS, be aware. Again, strategy, secondaries. How do these things fit together? If you have GERD or IBS, you might be better served going and finding another organ that's probably screwed up in your body that pays 40, 60, or 100 percent. If you don't have GERD or IBS service connected, this claim might be good for you. How's the VA rate fatty liver disease? 100% rating, near constant, completely disabling symptoms like fatigue, uneasiness, vomiting, anorexia, joint pain, and pain in the upper right abdomen. A 60% rating, significant fatigue, uneasiness, anorexia with significant weight loss or malnutrition, and swelling in the liver or incapacitating episodes totaling six weeks or more in the past year. That includes symptoms like fatigue, uneasiness, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, joint pain, and pain in the upper right abdomen. I want to stop on this part right here, incapacitating episodes. I have this, and I have a 60% rating for chronic fatigue syndrome because I have incapacitating episodes for over six weeks. So this means you're out, and that's what happens to me. Six weeks out of the year, I'm not moving. I know I look like I move around on the video a lot. Um, yeah, guess what I'm doing most of the rest of the time with my life? Not making videos. I'm, I'm in bed. I don't move. So you want to make sure that's documented within the past year. So you could do this on a, you know, use a log, like migraine buddy kind of thing. Write it down. You're in incapacitating episodes. And make sure you bring that information to your doctor. So when they're doing the DBQ or the independent medical opinion for you, they are saying incapacitating episodes six weeks or more, or four to six weeks, whatever the rating you're going for and whatever you actually have. So from 60 down, it's six weeks or more, and then the symptoms are basically the same for 40%, but that's four to six weeks. And then a 20% rating is two to four weeks, and then a 10% rating is one to two weeks. So when we don't know this stuff, right, and we file a claim and we don't know, we need to be very specific about how much we're laid out in incapacitating episodes. Probably never heard of that term either. Yeah, how much does it bother you? That's the question they're asking you. It's like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Well, how many times in the last month? Once. If you say you have them once a month, there's 12 months in a year. So 12 days out of the year, you have an incapacitating episode. That's why you have a 10% rating because it's between one or two weeks, 12 days, right? Be sure that you get this part right and make sure your doctor writing the nexus has this down right. And if your VA doctors are lowballing you, um, yeah, welcome to the club. Try to get them to not lowball you or just go around them and go get a private doctor. You may run into a situation where you need to appeal a decision. Maybe this happened to you. You deserve a rating because you have incapacitating episodes at six weeks or more, which is a 60% rating, but you didn't talk about this properly and you got a 10% rating instead. That happens a lot. If you need to appeal, one of your options is lawyering up. Check out the sponsor of today's video, Hill and Pond. Links in the description. Also, if you were in Camp Lejeune between 53 and 87 and you were there for over 30 days, you may be entitled to benefits under the PACT Act. 